Hello everyone, it is Thursday, April 26, 2023, and I'm here to do some live coding. We're gonna have a quick short session here where we're gonna look at a new model that was just released to the public for free. Let's, uh, let's take a look, shall we? I am going to switch over to my other view here and you could see I have this paper up that was released by Meta AI. By the way, hi Diego, nice to see you in chat. Hope you're doing well tonight. Um, so we're gonna take a look at this model and the paper and we're gonna actually try to apply it using Python on some images. So if you have any example images out there that you wanna share with me, let me know. All right, so what is this model? Well, it was released by Meta AI, as I mentioned before, and it's a model for doing image segmentation. So let's read a little bit of the abstract. So we introduce Segment Anything project, a new task model and data set for image segmentation. Using our efficient model in a data collection loop, we built the largest segmentation data set to date by far with over 1 billion masks on 11 million licensed and private privacy respecting images. The model is designed and trained to be promptable so you can transfer zero shot to new image distribution and tasks. That's pretty cool. I mean, already we're seeing that this is something not seen before publicly available. So segmentation tasks just got a lot easier. Uh, we can evaluate its capabilities on numerous tasks to find that its zero shot performance is impress impressive, opt often competitive with or even superior to prior fully supervised results. So I guess they're saying that this is not a supervised model because it was trained in this data collection loop. So I'm guessing that means that it um, they gathered more data and then they had it uh, train on those images. Well, I guess I had it predict on those images and then fed back into the model training process. We are releasing the segment anything model and corresponding data set of 1 billion masks. I don't think we're gonna download all 1 billion masks. An image is segmentanything.com. So let's go ahead and put this in the chat. Let's see what people are saying. Oh wait, uh, your images delay voice coming first. Okay, let me delay my audio. Advanced audio properties. And I will delay this a little bit more. Thank you for letting me know. That's going to be worse. All right. How about this? How's that? Let me know if it's better. Um, we got Abhishek saying, yo, Rob, are you doing, doing a great job? Keep it up. Thank you. Audio is out of sync. Uh, code monkey. Yeah. Let me know if it's better now. I can make it even more delayed if we need to. All right. So this site has some examples of how the SAM segment uh, anything model uh, works. You could see it's able to take images like this and segment out the different objects the the frog from this snail you also have like uh pieces of clothing on people and um it's able to extend these outputs even in the 3d that's interesting uh zero shot generation that basically means and i tried this earlier you could just run it on an image and tell me give me all the segments for that Okay, you guys are saying the sound is better. Hey Rob, please put some videos on how to get a job in AI. I will try. I have some I have some videos similar topic on how to get started machine learning. Greetings from Nepal. Welks woke up welcome Sabin. Alright, so segment anything. Um let's go back to this model. So here's their site where we could see oh there's some cute doggies. There's some cute doggies. So let's see what it does. In this demo you could click somewhere 
and it will segment based on that. We're gonna do this in Python with the downloaded weights. The cool thing about this is that these companies are starting to release these model, not only the architecture, but the weights. Like it is other than OpenAI, besides the name, well, I guess a lot of companies are not releasing everything, but some companies are deciding just to release everything, um, including this model. Okay, so we can see as we're clicking, it's using that as a prompt, as equivalent of a prompt to help us segment this image. Uh, random question, Thought, thoughts on Numer AI? I have no opinion. No opinion. Um, so this is kind of like, I don't know, in Photoshop, how you can select something and it'll, it'll kind of like take out the background. Or if I take a picture for a YouTube, uh, what's it called? Thumbnail. And I want to take out the background. It would be able to segment that really, really well. And this is all with the public, um, code base. So let's go ahead and see what, do we need to look any more into the paper? Yeah. Let's look a little bit more into the paper. Large language models pre-trained on web scale data sets are revolutionizing NLP. We know that to be true with strong zero shot and few shot generalization. These foundation models can generalize to tasks and data distributions beyond those seen during training. This capability is often implemented with prompt engineering in which handcrafted text is used to prompt the language model to generate a valid textual response to the task at hand. So you can see how they're drawing the parallels between something like chat GPT and, um, and segmentation using this tool. So if you did want to use a segmentation task and you wanted a human to label it, it's no longer necessary to have the human actually write out the segmentation of like, if you could think of uh, satellite images of houses and you wanted to just uh, segment out the solar panels, no reason to draw those squares anymore because the people can now just click. It'll draw the segment as well as it can with this model. And then the user can correct when scaled and trained with abundant text corpora from the web. These models, they're talking about large language models. Uh, zero and few shot performance compares surprisingly well to even matching in some cases, fine tuned models. Empirical trends show this behavior improvement with model size, data set size, and totaling total training compute foundation. So these are like the main three things that make machine learning what it is and AI, what it is today is um, model size, data size, because you can't have a big model and no data. That's not going to help you. And you can't have a big model and big data set without having a lot of compute. So it's like those three things always go together. Foundation models have also been explored in computer vision, albeit to a lesser extent. So they're releasing this as a foundation model. Perhaps the most prominent illustration that aligns paired text and images from the, the web. For example, clip and align use contrastive learning to train text and image encoders to align with two modalities. Once trained, engineered text prompts enable zero shot generalization to novel visual concepts and data distributions. Such encoders also compose effectively with other modules to enable downstream tasks such as image generalization like Dolly. While much progress has been made in vision language encoders, computer vision includes wide range of problems beyond scope. Uh, for many of these abundant trading data does not exist. In this work, our goal is to build a foundation model for image segmentation. AOA. Okay. Let's read the chat. Um, is it just me or is the audio out of sync? So is it still bad? Should I make it even? Is it now? Is it audio too soon or too late? Probably should have checked this before. The success of this plan hinges on three components, task model and data. So the, the, my audio is too soon. So if I make this like this, 
Is that delay better? Better? Test? One, two, three. <laughs> Uh, what task will enable zero so shot general generalization? So that is better. Okay, great. Um, so we need a task. We need a corresponding model architecture and the data that can power the model. These questions are entangled and require a comprehensive solution. We start by defining a promptable segmentation task that is general enough to provide a powerful pre-training objective and enable a wide range of downstream applications. All right, so here they go into the details of the task, the model, and the data. Here are some examples of it, but we're gonna do it ourselves. So let's let's go ahead and go to the GitHub repo. This is the GitHub repo that I'll put into the chat. I'm glad the audio is better. Let me know, keep on letting me know if the audio is bad because I wanna be able to fix it. Um, those sort of things really annoy me when I I noticed them on other people's streams, so I don't want to be that guy. All right, segment anything model um, creates these high quality masks. Now, I just went into my uh, my Conda environment, my base one that I use for most things, and all I had to do was pip install from. It's not on PyPy, but if you if you pip install from this GitHub repo, then it should install most of the things you need. And then you also need to make sure that you have all these other packages installed, like OpenCV, Matplotlib, PyPy, Cocoa Tools, but that's that's pretty easy to do. All right, so now that we have everything, it's 98% there. So does that mean the audio is still messed up? Let's try even more. This might be too more of a delay. Would it be nice that you can do some project with mathematical op optimization operations, like having five lines but run three? Oh, that that's a cool idea in the chat. I need to think about that one. All right, so let's do let's create a new notebook called segment anything um testing out the sam model hey xcode xcode let's see xcode just subscribe with prime for seven months thanks xcode that's really nice of you let's go to spin this picker wheel for you it hasn't really hit on anything interesting recently let's see if you're lucky Oh my goodness, five push-ups. That's that's no joke. That's no joke. Okay, let's go ahead and do it. Should I change okay. Five push-ups. So when I started doing this about a year ago, a little over a year ago. I would spin the wheel for any new follower on Twitch, any new fo follower. And there was one night I got so many followers that I, my arms were about to fall off because I did so many push-ups. I think I did 10 push-ups every time I had a new follower, but thanks X, X code. Um, so let's go ahead and put this in our repo. And let's test out how we use it. Hey, we have another sub by Afroform, Afro Prism. Afro Prism, is that right? Subscribe with Prime. Thanks for for subbing. Subscribe with Prime, people. If you haven't subscribed with Prime to anyone else, it's completely free. If you have Amazon Prime. Oh, sign to the mic. <sighs> All right, here we go. Here we go. Um, I realize that you're not, you're not seeing this. All right. So I am going into test the SAM model and we're going to use one of the, I'm going to pull up one of the example notebooks that they have over on the other side. So I go to notebooks. Uh, so they have like two different ways that you can do it. It looks like this predictor. 
where you can actually give it prompts or, or show where in the image that you want to select and then it will try to segment based on that. Um, so we're gonna import some things like NumPy, PyTorch, etc. Oh, let's also make sure I shut down, shut down all these. So my GPU, that actually might change the way my video looks. I wonder if my GPU, We didn't see the wheel, but he got to sigh into the mic. Yes, it did land on sigh into the mic. <laughs> Next time do push-ups with Bruce Lee style. I can barely do normal ones. All right, so we have some helper functions. Um, and let's take an example image. Um, we're gonna open that image using CV2. So I did download this one image, but there might be, there might be better examples than this um, that we could use. And we're gonna use matplotlib just to plot this image. So this is an image of uh, someone, or an astronaut drinking on the moon. How do we use the SAM model? Um, well, we need to provide it the checkpoint path, the device that we're going to use to predict, which is the GPU on my machine and the model type. So the model type and the weights are going to be associated with each other. If I go into this directory and I show you, I've downloaded, uh, two of the model weight types. This H version is 2.4 gigabytes. And that is the default that they say to use. Then there's a smaller version that's 358 megabytes. And um, I downloaded that while the larger one was downloading earlier. So we're just gonna use the default one. Um, so now we get to import the model from segment, oh, segment anything. We're gonna import the SAM model registry and the SAM predictor. Then we are going to create our SAM model. So our SAM model is going to use the SAM model registry. We're going to provide it the model type, which is default. And then we are going to load our checkpoint from what we've saved here, which is our SAM checkpoint. That's just going to load these weights in, onto my GPU. So this two gigabytes is now, if I look at my top, it's going to be loaded onto this GPU, I think, when I run. Oh yeah, so I need to put it on the device. Uh, that I can do by doing two device, which is my G GPU or CUDA. And there we go. All right, so now we have our model. This is the architecture of this model, uh, but really the beauty of it, well, it's the architecture, but also the um, fact that it was trained on so much data that it's going to do better, have better results than if we just took our own trained model <laughs> and try to predict. All right, so we now we make a predictor object, and now with our predictor, we can set the image to be this image that we've loaded in of the space guy on the moon. Now we have our predictor with our loaded in image. Let's see what the features are. So it has features, input height, original size. So it looks like this object takes some things in, pulls it from the image. Um, but the main thing here is now that we have this image and our predictor, we can set our points, our point where we want to say to mask the image. So uh, let's just put a default point somewhere and see what it looks like on this image. 
All right, so we put a point down here. Where do you guys think we should actually put the point to try to see if it can segment? I think on, right on that beer bottle in the middle would be the best. Um, so I think that's around like 300. And the Y is about 200. No, that's a little bit to the left. So it's going to be like 320, 350. Nope, too much. 340, okay. Try to change the point. Yeah, the point, we are going to make it right here just to see how it works. Does that sound good? Um, so basically, now we have this input point and we gave it a label. We could give it multiple points, but let's just start with this. Let's say our label one is the beer bottle. Uh, try to change the planet. Oh, that would be cool. I don't know if we're there yet. We're not quite there yet. Um, so we're going to take this and now we're going to take our predictor model. Remember, we loaded this image into the predictor. We're going to predict um, with our point coordinates being this input point and our point labels is just these input label. And then we're going to say multitask output equals true. This means that it could find multiple masks for this region. And I think it could be. Yeah, so default, it's going to output three masks with the scores, giving the mo models estimation on the quality of these masks. These settings are intended for ambiguous input prompts and help the model dis disentangle Tangulate different objects consistent with the prompt. When false, it will return a single mask. So we could make this false um, and it would give us one mask, but we're just gonna we're just gonna keep it as true and it's gonna give us three masks, scores, and logits. That's what it's gonna give us as the result. And now if we look at the masks, oh if I could spell masks. If we look at the masks, shape, we can see it has the height and the width of the image and also three different masks, just like we said it would. Okay, let's visualize this, shall we? I'm going to use this code. Yeah, so this is number of masks. height and by width. And now we can use this code to plot out each mask. So I think this mask is so good that we can't even, so this first one I actually can't see where it's been drawn on because I think the dot is too large on top of it. So let's maybe take this show points out. Yeah, so it looks like it actually just got part of the beer label in that one. And the second one did the whole beer top. And this third one has the complete beer bottle. It looks like it segmented it almost perfect. Try to change the planet. Oh, uh, wait, that's the same message as before. So, yeah, someone wanted to see the planet selected. Let's go ahead and do that and see if it does well on that. So if I move this up a little bit. And over a little bit. Now we've selected the planet. I'm going to run this again. It's super quick to run. And the first thing it did is like selected a little bit of that region of the moon. Yeah. And then the third one actually selects the whole image. Uh, the whole planet. It looks like it did a pretty good job. It even got the fact that this right side of the planet was dark. Um Let's find a different image. Let's find a different image that's good for segmentation. Shall we? What do you guys think? This might be a good image for... for segmentation. Let me find this. Throw it into here. 
and we're going to try this. So let's try on different image. And I'm curious to know, so apparently we can also write, draw boxes around it and see how well it does with that. So let's do image read, like all of this, same stuff, but with my different image now. This different image I just downloaded, bunch of wine grapes. So I want to see how well it does of actually segmenting out each of the grapes. Um, so let's actually draw a box around it. Let's make a, a box that we try to predict around. Um, where's our input box? I don't see it. What color is it? Green, maybe? Let's do 100, 100. Okay, now I see a green box. And let's do 200, 200. Let's kind of box this out, okay? Uh, to the left a bunch. Sorry, to the right. To the right, to the left. There we go. Kind of selecting these grapes. And maybe up a little bit more. Other way, there we go. Now we've selected some of the grapes in this box. And let's go ahead and take this box as our input box. And we're gonna run our prediction on it. Let's see how this goes. Uh, we'll use our predictor. Oh wait, we need to set our predictor. Set image to now our new image. And then we are just gonna create these results of the mask see how well it did oh wait that's the dot where's the mask where's the mask show mask masks zero i don't see anything let's turn off the image Uh, I don't want to show points either. It doesn't look like it actually got anything. How many masks did this produce? One mask. So let's actually turn this on the multi mask again and see what each of the masks look like. So I'm going to turn off the image. It's really nothing for the first second or third oh because it's still taking in a point not a box so let's turn this point off two i don't really see anything is it failing uh i will try this tomorrow way too tired already to get gn working on gnns oh yeah it's late my friend hasn't just released by Facebook. Yeah, that's what we're checking out. We're checking out this new model released by Facebook called Sam. So what did I do wrong here? It's like the input box was not correctly put in. Input box.
and we see no labels. Huh. Let's try the auto masking to see if that can work better. That's a good that's a good transition to auto segmentation. For a moment I thought my mono was dirty, but I think you saw a small mask there. Okay, so let's try again. Let's try just showing the mask. Here I don't see anything. All right, so it only generated one. Yeah, let's just show this mask zero. If I sum this, it sums to zero. Sum 41? No. Um, make sure I have the right image, yes. We have to set the image. Let's maybe create a brand new predictor. That could be it. See, see, I haven't tried this yet before, and maybe you need to create a new predictor each time with the SAM model. So if I create a brand new predictor, I set the image on the predictor, and then I generate masks from that. Nope. Let's try to do the points. Or, or maybe zoom in this box a little bit more. Nope, nope, that's wrong. Yes, so let's move it a little bit to the right. Clearly, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> ah, no. This is where it starts on the y-axis. So I want this to move up a little bit. Yes. Then I want this to be the right a little bit. There we go. That's like right on there. Okay. Come on. Come on, Sam model. Give me something. You got to give me something to work with. I think it's hard to tell. I think we have no masks. Multitask output, let's try that. Mask zero, one and two. And I know for sure these are all empty because they sum to nothing. All right, auto segmentation time. Auto segmentation can take any image, use the SAM automatic generator and it should be able to automatically segment it. So we're gonna now import, import the SAM automatic mass generator, and we're gonna run this on the checkpoint, create a mass generator, and let's generate these masks on this image. And it's failing, out of memory. Okay, so clearly I was not resetting my, um, clearing the memory out every time I ran that and that could have been part of the issue. So now I've reset this whole, um, this whole thing. And I'm going to reload this image, create our mass generator. Name CV2 is not okay. So we need to import CV2 and we need to copy over the model info here go back down we're gonna use this default motto model we're gonna create a mass generator and we're gonna try to generate it on that image of grapes oh this music's kind of crazy okay This music might be a little bit more upbeat. All right, so now we have masks. What's the shape of this? Okay, so this has segmentation, area, box. Segmentation, area, box. So let's look at the length of these masks. There's 331 masks that it found 
in this image of grapes. Let's remember we can show this image. Oh, we have to import matplotlib. Put this up here and show it. Here are our grapes. Let's see what the masks look like when we plot them on this image. Now I'm gonna use this helper function that they provide that is set up to show the annotations. This should work, right? Oh, NumPy is not defined. Let's go, come on. Don't fail me now. Do you guys think that this, uh, this is on the same level as large language models? Does this excite people? Hey Rob, have you tried YOLO V8? I have, I actually made a whole stream on that. And um, maybe eventually I'll make an actual YouTube video about it. Now, is this taking forever because there are so many masks that it found? It might be. Yeah, so it's going through this for loop. And it's adding all these different masks. Maybe I should have just had it do, do like done a few first but hey if it breaks my machine then then the stream is over so not my problem let's go ahead and stop this keyboard interrupt just to try it i'm gonna do just 10 of these masks just to make sure the code isn't the issue there we go. So we can see some of the bigger masks it looks like it starts with. Yeah, so if I turn off the image showing and we only looked at these 10 masks. Oh wait, we're not gonna see them on this image. Maybe that's why we weren't seeing the masks before. So let's just go in here and see what the segmentation looks like. So if I do run a sum on this, you can see the values are more than just zero. So it's actually segmenting out part of it. I think I pick it, picked an image with too many. Too many segments. Let's wrap this in TQDM so we can actually see the progress when it's running. So I'm gonna put these both up here and we're gonna run this on, let's say 50. All right, going pretty fast. Maybe it's just the rendering of all 50 that it's struggling with. What are you masking? I'm masking this image. Maybe we need to pick a different image. That could be part of the problem. We could go Um, if I go to images, image masking, well, these are going to all show things that are already masked. Probably there we go. What the heck? What, what do we just do? Oh, I didn't plot the image. I didn't actually show the image. Why do I always have bandwidth issues slash quality on this stream? Oh, I don't know. Am I the, is that always me? Am I the problem? It's me, hi. Um, so this is pretty cool. It looks like it's it's found most of the segments. Let's go ahead and run on all 200, some of these, 331.
14 720p is okay man it says my stream is solid right now in terms of bandwidth so hopefully it's not me Maybe that's why, maybe that's why they don't run this example on such a crazy, um, segmented, potentially segmented image is because it takes too long to render. So I'm going to go ahead and do this, move this up here and we're going to switch images. Let's go ahead and reset my kernel here. We're going to open up this dog image. This is the example that they show in their repo. And create our mask generator. Let's take a look at this image. Tell us, test on the Milky Way image. Yeah, we'll want to we'll be sitting here all week. All right, so this is something we could segment. So it should segment out the dog from the bowl, from the hand, from the person. Let's see if it can do that. All right, 66 masks, still a good bit, not 300 some. I joined late, man. I know the system specifications like graphic processor, RAM, OS. Um, yeah, it's uh, I'm running Ubuntu 22. Oh, six or whatever it is. Um, I have this uh, Ryzen Threadripper, 32 cores, 62 gigs, 64 gigs of RAM. I have two GPUs, 1080 Ti's. They're kind of old, but I have two of them to make up for it. And that's what I have. All right, here's the new segmentation. So this is the segmentation that this created. That's pretty good. That's pretty darn good. I gotta say for myself. Let's try to take a picture of me and see how it does segmenting that. All right, chat, I'm gonna take a screenshot. Hold on here, let's go to screenshot tool. Segment this, let's segment this. Save that to our desktop. Pull this in here. Let's segment me. Take my screenshot. Let's go ahead and show it first. This is me taken right now. Oh wait, I didn't switch back. Okay. Hi, Deli. Welcome in the chat. All right, so we have this image and we're gonna try to segment it using the auto segmenter. So first we have to create the segments. Where did I do that again? Oh, mask generator, generate masks. So let's time this as we run that cell. Five seconds to create the masks. And then let's go ahead and plot these. 122 masks. Out of the meta, Sam. Kunai from India. Good morning. Good morning. How's it going? You're just starting your day. I'm just ending it. So if you're just joining us, we're checking out this segment anything model that was released by Meta AI. Uh, it's kind of cool that they've released models and they're starting to release weights 
and everything with it. So you could, um, I guess in theory, just like plug this into any app that you want and improve your segmentation. The paper was released too. Put that here in the chat. Um, probably a good idea to read that all the way through. Um, but yeah, here it did segmenting. Uh, you can see it kind of picked out some of the books in the back. Was able to segment out the chat and the microphone. And I mean, that's pretty good for right out of the box. Um, another thing that they mentioned is that this isn't just the model that they're releasing, but they're releasing a data set over 1 billion masks on 11 million images. So that I can imagine that being a potential to use on, um, on other tasks. Like if you wanted to train other models or fine tune it. Wow, the model turned me into Shrek. It kind of did. It just chooses, I think this code just tries to display uh, the mask as a random color. So it just randomly chose me to be green, like Shrek. I think I take after Shrek in some ways. Hey Rob, how often is stuff like convex optimization used in the field in your experience? I think it really depends. Um, I've worked with people who are just like optimization experts and they kind of know that field and they, they work in it really well. I myself, I mean, I think that all machine learning in some ways is kind of an optimization problem, but specifically convex optimization, I don't know. It didn't mask your hand with the same mask as your face. Yeah, so it, this is sort of like a, you get what you get and you don't get upset sort of thing. So I don't think it even masked my hand or maybe it did. One of these 122. Um, but if we look at their demo, you can kind of see where this might be useful. Like if you wanted to, before we were trying to draw those points, on our own. But if we just wanted to select all the dots that we could, oh, let's remove that one. Oops. Undo. So we're going to add masks to all these green dots. Say I'm lazy here. Or sorry, not add masks, add points. Um, yeah, so it's starting to mask just to what I select here, or I could do the everything, which is kind of what we ran on the last one where it will pick its own points for optimal segmentation. And that's pretty cool. What would be some real life applications and business use case for segment anything model? Um, so think about if you had any task where you were going to pay a human annotator to draw, to select it. So let's say you work in a factory, you work for a factory and they want to identify when thingamabobs that they're creating are, um, defective on the factory line. Um, then you'd want to train a, a custom data set on those types of images. Well, you don't have to have a human go out and annotate each thing. If they can use a model like this to help them annotate. Hey, I was thinking about a project earlier today. What was your idea? Dr. Verm? Let me know. This is all I had planned to show tonight. And I think we've pretty much done it. I mean, it's just a model. It's got weights. You pip install it. It uses PyTorch in the back end. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it just works. 
You can see here that the model weights are like you, you can choose the large one or the small one. There's also like a medium sized one. Yeah, that's about it. They have some pretty cool, like the examples definitely look really cool. Hey, can I ask if there are any major differences in using TensorFlow versus PyTorch? Uh, there are a lot of differences. There are a lot of similarities that you'd be surprised to know about. Especially the newer version like TensorFlow 2 and newer PyTorch. They've just kind of taken the good things of each other. and Very similar. But also, if you get used to using one, you're probably going to prefer to use that. And PyTorch seems like it's just kind of taken over as the, for research at least, the main, um, the main package that people use to train deep learning models in research. And TensorFlow in industry or like something that you're actually going to productionize, like TensorFlow Lite is pretty cool. Um, it's also a lot easier to get started, I think, with TensorFlow, especially with certain architectures that are already set up. Uh, but you know, if I had to choose to start a project brand new, probably start with PyTorch. I think it's, I think it's a good thing to kind of learn both though. Yep. Is the model would help you task like annotation. Not sure if it could be done to complement using a classifier to category to the segments, or is it too different from the segmentation? Yo, no, no. I think that. I think that when we when we used it here and we provided it up in this example, uh, the area, the region of interest to annotate, we could have given it multiple points like here. Let's go back to this example. Um, yeah, we need to start from scratch. Start from this example of the guy in the moon, we could give this uh, label and the earth the label and the beer bottle a label. And then it would segment based on those labels. So we didn't do it before, but let's try like to add two points. Yeah, what is it doing here though? Input point. What do we have initially? This. Oh yeah, it's, it's complaining because this is not the same size. So we have one point there and then we also do like 200 Make this a label of two. I'm not sure why it's not showing, like actually showing the image. But if we do put our input labels, which are multiple things into this prediction object, it should make masks for each. That's one mask here. Yeah, I don't know. I want to see his response since he works at NVIDIA. Who works? Who works at NVIDIA? I don't work at NVIDIA. Who said I worked at NVIDIA? Yep, the model would help for tasks to annotate. Uh, thoughts on using AMD GPUs for machine learning. They recently got support for the newer versions of TensorFlow and PyTorch. I mean, that's all new to me. All I know is I had, I used to have an AMD card that I bought for gaming. And then I started getting into machine learning and it was impossible to get to do machine learning on the AMD chip back in the day. Nowadays, if that's the case, then maybe they're going to start being used more. But 
as of now, if you talk about using GPUs for deep learning, you're you're essentially just saying I'm going to use a Nvidia card. Unless something major has changed. Not all AMD GPUs. Yeah, so maybe newer ones. That is a good segue, actually. For me to mention something. We are running our own Kaggle competition, people. Where you people could win this 4080 GPU or a 3080 GPU just by joining the leaderboard. So I'm going to put this into the chat. I want you guys to join. Okay? Promise me you will. Join this competition. Follow the rules in order to get this GPU or to be in the running for it. Also try to submit to the leaderboard. The data set that I've provided for this is eight years of my sleep history and other health data. People are using L LSTMs and PyTorch. Um, they're ensembling. There's a README. That's that's new. I haven't seen this one yet. Um, yeah, so there's some good analysis here. And people are all doing this to predict my sleep and to potentially win a GPU. 127 teams. That means that if you join, your odds are just one in 128 of winning a GPU outright. And then if you win the competition, if you try hard and actually win that, uh, you'll get a 4080. Yes, I was thinking you worked there because of the prize. Yeah, no, they just they just hooked me up with it. So yeah, you guys should join this. Um, there's some other places where you can find me too. If you are watching me on Twitch right now, I would love it if you check me out on YouTube. I'm going to put the link right there. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to me there. There we are streaming on that channel too. And you can follow me on Twitter. Got to make sure I do the right usernames. They're all slightly different. There, That's me on Twitter. You can follow me. And then also exclamation discord. We'll give the link to our Discord server. So you can go ahead and join that. And super easy. And you can come discuss things like the Kaggle competition that we have going on. So go ahead and uh, join. That would be fun. Oh, my Discord's updating. Uh, yeah, and that's all I really had planned today. Hey, Data Burst. Thank you for the subscription on twitter or on twitch with prime let's go ahead and spin the wheel for you and then i'm gonna be done ski going to bed see what it lands on ah do nothing such low odds of landing on that but i got lucky all right everyone i'm gonna go off line i will see you guys next time i stream Usually it's Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, but it kind of really depends. So hopefully I'll see you guys around and uh, have a good rest of your night. Be kind to each other. Hey, Ethan. Ethan Nadip. All right, I got a, one more spin in me. Thanks for subscribing. Tell a dad joke. Um, have I told this one before? Why did the... Why did the Scarecrow win an award? Because he was outstanding in his field. <laughs>